Chris, when you when you first walked into school stadium, what, what was your expectation on the year? I honestly thought that we had a group of players that if everything went well for us, we could get ourselves in a position to compete. I know I've said it over and over again, but that was our only expectation. Uh, and I said to the players after the game that I think after about six weeks, it really dawned on me that we had an extremely special group of people, not just players, but coaches, administrators, everyone involved in Geelong. Um, just makes me feel humbled to be a part of this organisation. Jimmy, do you think that this was made possible because of Chris's arrival? How much of a difference has that made if you think about what might have been if things had been different? Yeah, it's hard to talk in hypotheticals, but it certainly uh, rejuvenated the group and gave us a new focus. And um, you know, certainly the way we were playing towards the end of the last year, we were you know a bit behind the times with you know everybody playing the press and defensively. And Scotty obviously come in and made our own defence a big focus, and you know gave us ways to take on other sides and their their defence. Hey Jimmy, on your own game, you're kicking for goal. Uh, one outside 50, I think, which was a pretty big time. Is that just something that's come next week to you, a lot of hard work? Yeah, I do. Um, probably to Scotty and the coach's annoyance. I do hang around after training and kick barrels and torps and everything like that, probably more than they'd like. So it probably did did help today. Chris, as things stand now, personally, Premiership as a player, Premiership as a coach, how do they compare? Oh, it's unfair to compare them, but I can honestly tell you I've never felt better being involved with a football team than I do right now. Uh, it, it really, it's a little bit overwhelming, to be honest. Chris, um, St Steve Johnson, how close was he not playing and when was the final decision made? And just take us through the mechanics. Yeah, well, he, was, he was close um, to not playing. It was, we probably made the final decision um, uh, it was around about 10 o'clock this morning. Um, but I can honestly say, and I've said this to Steve, I didn't doubt him for a second. We spoke at length a number of times about what it would mean to go into a game um, injured, and he guaranteed me that if he couldn't do it, he wouldn't play. And I believed him 100% of the time. Was that this morning, the, the last one was, yeah. Chris, what were your thoughts when J-Pod went down and how much sort of overhaul did you have to make of your, your structures and how do you... Can you explain how some of that worked out and how you raised it? Yeah, we were a little bit concerned because he's very important for us structurally. Um, but we were confident that Trent West and, and Brad Ottens could play a role for us. And we've been working really hard all year, and, and that work had been done years before I arrived as well, to make sure that we had a group of players that could play multiple positions. And Jimmy's as good an example as anyone. Um, Stephen Wells gets, uh, he's starting to get a little bit of credit, but he doesn't get enough because he's brought some amazing people to the Geelong Footy Club and they're well-rounded players. We believe that we play the right way and we have a number of players that, that can step up when others go down. And I think today was as good as good an example as any. I mean, did it become a necessity then that Tom Hall had to, had to be calm after Jacob went down? Yeah, it did, but... I'm so happy. personally. I'm just so happy for Hawk. He he was. I thought he was a difference at the start of the last quarter. Those contested marks were, were amazing, and we've always known internally that he could do that. Uh, and he's going to he's going to be a very good player for a long time. Uh, when when pods went down, it would be easy for the weight of expectation um, to weigh heavily on on Hawk, but it didn't. It had the opposite effect. He really stood up and took the game away from Collingwood. I thought. What do you think that's going to do for his career? Because, I mean, sort of right through, people are sort of questioning whether he's going to stand up on it accounts, but I guess the question has sort of been answered. Yeah. yeah, in reality, I think what it changes is your perception, the external perceptions. Uh, I don't think this will mean anything for him as a player. If he played poorly today, we'd still be sitting here disappointed, but confident that he's going to become a very good player. Nothing changes there, but hopefully a little bit of the external pressure will be lifted from his shoulders. Jimmy, what's the Norm Smith win for you? You won a brand new medal. It's just a different situation. Yeah, it is different, but um, with totally no disrespect to it or anything like that, I, I'm just happy with the other one, the Premiership medal. Um, you know, Scotty's touched on it before. We have a pretty fierce group that play for Premierships, and um, 
that, that's all I wanted. So I guess it's just some pretty nice icing on the cake, if you'd put it anyway. Jimmy, you went in the rooms, you had a chance to catch up with Dash and Moons. Have you said anything, or what was the message from those boys? Yeah, it's, it's probably a true reflection of how good of people they are. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the total love for the group, yeah, you can say that word. Um, they're so happy for the boys, and um, they're just as big a part of it as um, you know Dan Menzel and Nathan Vardy and all the others who played throughout the year. So um, they're two pretty special blokes who only think for the team. Um, Tom Lonigan, you had a Chris, um, you had to make a move with Cloak. Um, did you think that really changed things? Yeah, we did make a move with Cloak. Um, Harry Taylor got a pretty serious knock to the head and we were a bit concerned about him. It was around about the time that Podsy went down, so we were at least under a bit of pressure in the coach's box. I think the boys handled it pretty well out there. But our three tall defenders have been fantastic all year. Um, if, if you want an example of players that put the team before the individual, it's those three. They don't want any credit. They always do it together. And the opposition have really important key forwards. Um, they work together to make sure they're stopped and no one of them would uh, take the credit above another. Chris, some great shots of you in the coach's box today, yeah, riding a roller coaster <laughs> of emotions. Can, can you somehow put into words what it is like to be sitting in that seat, yeah, first year coach, and, and can you describe the emotions for us? Because uh, we, we want to match the words to the picture. Yeah, you can't. Sorry, or I, at least I can't. Um, I, I just keep going back to the fact that I'm, I'm so fortunate and. Um, humbled to be a part of, of this organisation. Um, in a lot of respects, I'm incredibly fortunate to have such a good coaching group. And I think it's must be one of the youngest coaching teams in history. I think our oldest guy is about 37. Um, but really, at times, we just got out of the way this year because we have such an incredible group of players. Uh, even in the last 10 minutes of the game, we commented in the box that we wanted to be sending things out to the players, but we didn't need to because it was all done. And, and we can pat ourselves on the back. I'm going to take credit for that as coaches, but it wouldn't be appropriate because these players, uh, are, they've been amazingly well coached for a long period of time, but it's about time they started taking a bit more of the credit themselves. Chris, you, you went for two jobs this time last year. Destiny gave you this one. Do you reflect on that? What I, I try not to. I try not to. But I understand why you asked the question. I'm really... Um, I, I want to be careful not to be disrespectful to Port Adelaide. Chris, Chris can, you, um, can you tell us what you thought of Jimmy's game today and also what he means to the Geelong Football Club generally? Yeah, I think he's a pretty good example of the type of footballer that Geelong tries to develop. He can play absolutely anywhere. He's great at ground level, fantastic. Um, mark for his size, um, but above and beyond everything else, he plays for the team and he wins contests. And that's what the game was today. It was really one-on-one. -on -one. I think if anyone was in our coaches' box or in our meeting rooms, you'd probably be all be a little bit disappointed about how simple the messages were because it was back, and we stripped it back to um, really simple footy, you know, underage stuff, really. The team that wins the most contests will win this game. Chris, where's the improvement next year come from, given that the comp gets better every year? It's a pretty good question, because as of Monday, we'll be into it again. I think we'll take a day and a half or so to enjoy it. Um, <laughs> but we, we, need, we need to keep improving. Now, that's difficult. It was difficult 12 months ago. It's probably going to be even more difficult looking forward to next season, but it's possible. And, and that's all we said at the start of um, last pre-season, that things are some things are stacked against us a little bit, and this is going to be tough. And don't get annoyed by the people asking questions about the playing group from the outside, because it's fair enough. It's objective data, we can't argue with it. But it is possible if we put a number of things in place. And we've got some young players coming through that we think can be AFL players, we don't know yet, but if they do well enough through the pre-season, they'll be given an opportunity. And just as importantly, we've got a group of senior players that are as competitive as any group of people I've ever seen and I don't expect that to change next year.